Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Let's discuss the wild life and times of Caligula. Enjoy the video. In the entirety of the Roman Empire's expansive history, there are more than enough tales of debauchery to fill several books. However, for all the depraved people who sat on the Roman throne, there's one emperor whose lifestyle stands head and shoulders above the rest, Caligula. The third emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, Caligula marks the halfway point of the short-lived dynasty begun by Augustus. Formerly known throughout his empire as Gaius, Caligula was a childhood nickname. Caligula might also be known as the Teflon Caesar thanks to his ability to squeak through political intrigues without a scratch, until he was slain by a crowd in the middle of a street. In just four years as emperor, Caligula managed to carve a place in history as one of the most opulent, perverse, and flat-out nuts rulers in all of history. So here, for your consideration, are some of Caligula's wildest stories and outbursts. He was intimate with his three sisters. Caligula's father perished when he was a young kid, but the boy who would be king had one of history's more scheming mothers, Agrippina the Elder. Unfortunately, she ran up against Tiberius, Emperor of Rome. When Tiberius got tired of Agrippina's cunning, he had her executed and then systematically broke down her remaining family. Caligula's oldest brother, Nero, not that Nero, was banished on charges of treason. The middle brother, Drusus Caesar, met his demise in exile. That left Caligula essentially the prisoner of Emperor Tiberius, living with his only remaining family, his three sisters. Maybe that's why he took to sleeping with each of them in public. According to Suetonius, at a large banquet he placed each of his sisters in turn below him while his wife reclined above. Of these he is believed to have violated Drusilla when he was still a minor and even to have been caught lying with her by his grandmother Antonia, at whose house they were brought up in company. He slept with anyone and everyone. It seemed that the more power Caligula attained, the more anxious he was to sleep around. Several historians, including Suetonius, claim that Caligula had not the slightest regard for chastity, either his own or others, and was accused of having homosexual relations, both active and passive, with Marcus Lepidus, also Nestor the comedian, and various foreign hostages. Moreover, a young man of a consular family, Valerius Catullus, revealed publicly that he had buggered the emperor and quite worn himself out in the process. The point is that Caligula was extremely open about the fact that he'd go after anyone who excited him, which was pretty much everyone. He threw lavish adults-only parties. When he wanted to throw a party, Caligula would turn one of his marble-floored villas into his own Roman version of Studio 54. He'd round up literally hundreds of strangers of all social classes and then ply them with food and wine. In the background, professional musicians would play music to get everyone in the mood, while male and female sex workers mingled among the guests. He disrobed and described his partners in public. Caligula would approach a young Roman noble couple whom he had invited to the party. He'd choose the member of the couple most appealing to him, either male or female, and then inspect them as though appraising a piece of livestock up for auction. He'd pull their clothes off to reveal them to the crowd and he'd comment loudly on their appearance. Then, Caligula would take the young noble person into his private quarters, defile them, and then return to the party to give his guests an informed blow-by-blow -blow of his partner's performance. He once chopped a slave's hands off mid-party. Caligula was a man of quickly changing moods. 
On top of that, he was a bit of a sociopath who enjoyed messing with his guests' minds. At one party, he supposedly chuckled lightly to himself. When asked what he found so funny, the emperor replied, because if I nodded once to my guards, I could have all your throats cut. At another party, Caligula caught one of his slaves pocketing silver. In response, Caligula cut off the man's hands at the wrist and then had him carried around the party so each visitor could get a good look at the excitement. He ended people's lives for staring at his bald spot. For someone who was so concerned with other people's looks, Caligula apparently was plain himself. He was a skinny man with pale skin who was thinning on top, but who had a reputation for being pretty hairy everywhere else. Being the emperor, though, Caligula could ensure that he was respected. People caught looking down at him from a high place, who might have seen his bald spot, and anyone who mentioned the word goat in his presence could be struck down immediately. Caligula was extremely interested in making sure that the people around him were intimidated. He supposedly practiced making terrible and fearsome expressions before a mirror. He fancied himself a living god. Caligula became increasingly convinced of his own godhood. At one point, he ordered every Grecian statue that was renowned for its artistry brought to him so he could lop off the head and replace it with his own likeness. According to Suetonis, he also set up a special temple to his own godhead with priests and with victims of the choicest kind. In this temple was a life-sized statue of the emperor in gold which was dressed each day in clothing such as he wore himself. The richest citizens used all their influence to secure the priesthoods of his cult and bid high for the honor. The victims were flamingos, peacocks, black grouse, guinea hens, and pheasants offered day by day each after its own kind. He built a floating bridge just to have the last laugh. Several historical accounts make mention of Caligula's most famous building project, the floating bridge that spanned the Bay of Baiae. On one side of the bay was the Roman palace and on the other, a series of temples set up to honor the gods. When Caligula was a child, an astrologer working for Tiberius joked that Caligula had as much chance of becoming emperor as he did of crossing the Bay of Baiae on horseback. So, to mark the beginning of his reign, Caligula anchored a series of merchant ships in a double line, then covered them with earth before riding a horse across it. Afterward, Caligula compared himself to Neptune for having traversed the ocean. He treated his horse like beloved royalty. Perhaps the one being Caligula trusted completely was his horse, Incitatus. Caligula treated the horse like one of the family. Caligula made Incitatus his consul and gave him living quarters to match. Incitatus had a marble stall and an ivory manger, and Caligula gave him purple blankets. The most expensive type of blanket in Rome also, purple was the color of royalty because the dye was incredibly expensive and rare. Incitatus also had his own house filled with furniture and a troop of slaves. Historians note a serious turning point in his behavior after he was ill. Shortly after he took the throne, Caligula became ill, some people think he might have been poisoned. Though he managed to recuperate, Caligula's behavior took a turn toward darkness. Believe it or not, before his illness, Caligula was celebrated for his generosity and pragmatism. After the illness, he began executing or banishing those close to him. He also began spending lavishly and having huge public orgies. He was slain in public in much the same way as the original Caesar. In addition to degrading the people of the empire one at a time, 
Caligula also enjoyed spending incredible amounts of money on fake food, think a solid gold loaf of bread. He found it amusing. All of Caligula's games and lavish parties couldn't last forever, though. He apparently emptied the Roman treasury in a matter of months because he was spending more on parties than Rome took in. All this bad behavior caught up to Caligula, though, and he was felled by a conspiracy of senators and the Praetorian Guard in public right before one of his lavish events. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.